One of the secret texts of Nididhyasana, non-dual meditation, and understanding of Brahma Jnana, the knowledge of Brahman, is the Ashtavaka Gita. And today we are going to contemplate a verse from the Ashtavaka Gita. Now this translation is by Swami Nitya Swarupananda. Now there's other beautiful translations like Thomas Byram's translation, which is called The Heart of Awareness. As you can see here, this one is actually called the Ashtavaka Samhita. But this is still the Ashtavaka Gita. This is the Ashtavaka Gita. And this is one of my favorites. I love Thomas Byram's as well. But this one from the Vedanta Society is a beautiful translation as well. Now, I'm not going to get into the nature of the story of the Ashtavaka Gita because we're just going to focus on the teachings. But Thomas Byram had a beautiful thing to say in the introduction of his translation where he said that when all the religious teachings come to an end, when all the philosophers have said what they have to say and they fall silent, Ashtavaka begins. So Ashtavaka begins when there is nothing more to say. You have stopped grinding the axe. You have stopped trying to figure out the nature of existence. And that's when Ashtavaka begins. So usually when we have a lot of things to say, that is a form of duality. But once everything has been said, then we come to the non-dual teachings of Ashtavaka or the Avaduta Gita, which I will cover in future videos. But I want to cover this text that is a Nididhyasana text. So in this episode, there is a beautiful verse I want to cover, which is a deep contemplation for all of us on the path and may be confusing for a lot of people who are not familiar with the non-dual teachings or have not assimilated the non-dual teachings, what we would call in Sanskrit Advaita or Advaita Vedanta. So without further ado, let's have a look at this verse. This wise one neither abhors birth and rebirth nor wishes to perceive the self. Free from joy and sorrow, he is neither dead nor alive. Now you're probably confused. So the sage or the wise one does not want to know the self, does not want liberation. In this verse, and remember, the self means Atman in Sanskrit, which is identical with Brahman, which is the undifferentiated consciousness in you and in me that connects us to the ultimate reality of Brahman, the fundamental irreducible essence of the universe. And so it can be quite confusing, right? Because the wise one neither wants life, birth, rebirth, nor liberation. But when you understand this from the Nididhyasana non-dual meditation and contemplation, what's being said in this phrase is that the urge for liberation is a consequent idea of metempsychosis. Now, metempsychosis means the transmigration of the soul from this body and into another body after death. So this idea of samsara where we move on into another body or another form, this is what metempsychosis is. So liberation means that we need to be free from this process. But that means that we aren't the self. Do you see? That means we aren't the Atman from this perspective. This is what's being said in the Ashtavaka Gita. The enlightened one is the self already. They understand that they could not be the Atman. They are fundamentally always the Atman. This is what I talk about a lot in my book, Enlightenment Now. So this process of that we're moving towards enlightenment on a journey towards liberation implies that we're not already liberated right now. So the Atman is eternal. It can not be anywhere else but right here and right now because you are always that. And so from the wise, from those who have experienced moksha, who have become enlightened, they understand that the idea of liberation, the idea of death and rebirth is all part of change. But the Atman is the changeless eternal reality, which is identical with Brahman. Brahman itself is the ultimate substratum. It is not defined by time even though time arises in its existence and we experience that. But the nature of Maya that we live in is to understand the changeless. So the sage doesn't shrink from one or the other in relation to liberation of metempsychosis. They are indifferent to both because they are absorbed in the Atman. So the concept that we need to be liberated 
is actually false, even though on a Jiva level, it is necessary to speak in this way as we do on the channel all the time. But if you're absorbed in the self, you understand Nididhyasana, the non-dual reality of existence, you understand the Brahmajnana, the knowledge of Brahman, then this concept then is silly really. This idea of liberating ourself that we could be anything else but the self is really stupid, but you can understand it because a lot of people identify with their identity, their ego, their jiva, their persona system, and don't realize that they're the Atman. And so this verse in the Astravaka really kind of flips things around for us and can be confusing for those who aren't ready for the teachings. But for those ready for the teachings, it's a beautiful thing. As I mentioned in the Nidhyasana video, Swami Savapriyananda said that understanding Nidhyasana texts is like someone who understands the deeper elements of classical music. They can really enjoy it instead of just listening to it. And that's what the Ishtavaka really is. Once you get into that Nidhyasana level of your spiritual cultivation, you realize and start to understand and marinate and absorb yourself in these teachings. And so in this verse, we really flip the script and we throw out the concept of liberation. We throw out the idea of metapsychosis, the concept of samsara. They're all gone because who could be liberated? Who could come back life after life if you're already fundamentally the self, the Atman? And you've only always been that. That's the tricky thing for us to understand on the path. And that's why we study the Nididhyasana text. We study these to marinate our mind in the ultimate reality of Brahman. How do we get out of behaving badly even after realization? How do we get out of this habit of jiva even though we understand it's all one? Well, this is where Ashtavraka comes in. This is where Ashtavraka begins, as Thomas Byram said. And so we absorb our mind into these teachings. We absorb our awareness into the understanding that fundamentally it's the jiva who is eager to be liberated. It's the jiva who wants to have a fortuitous birth in the next life. It's not the self. The self is changeless. It's eternal. It's the ultimate reality. Nothing can define it. It's undifferentiated. So it's only the differentiated aspect of ourselves, the jiva, the persona, the ego, that is eager for liberation, that is eager for a great birth in the next life because it is the one that suffers. But the self can never suffer. The Atman can never suffer. And this is why you need to come back into the heart of existence itself. And this is what Ashtavraka does. It brings you back to realize that it's only the jiva that suffers. But you yourself have to overcome that jiva to bring yourself back into the heart of awareness. And that's what the Ashtavraka Gita does. Shanti, shanti, shanti.